OK, well, th yeah. thanks for coming along. Uh, I'm Rachel Lawson. Um, I'm a freelancer up in, in the UK, in Norfolk. And I wanted to talk today about something that Dries actually mentioned this morning, which was around recognising both achieve achievements and contributions and how we can do that uh, both on, on websites uh, and what there is to, to, a, to kind of record that type of thing. So something that's really important to me is recognising that every single day of our lives is a day of learning. Everything we do is relevant and valuable to you doing your job as a good web developer, theme, uh, business analyst, project manager, all of those things. It's all relevant. Uh, I'm trying to think of an example. So I know a couple of people in the audience. JP, what was your first job? Okay, I'm going to ask you in a minute. Could I ask you yours? Um, first real job? Yeah. Well, first one you got paid for? Uh, I sold computers in a shop. Okay, I'm going to come back. Anybody else want to volunteer one? Yeah? I was a clipper programmer. Wow, that was your first job. Hello. <laughs> 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 okay. <laughs> Okay, so the three jobs there, what I'd like you to think is, by the time we get to the end of this session, think about what experience you gain from that that you still use now. Okay, so my experience as I was growing up, things like I was at uh, Scouts, Guides, lots of badgers, and uh, I used to teach others IT. That was my first job. I actually used to teach IT uh, to school kids, which was really good fun. And in fact, putting them together and teaching IT and fencing and archery and so on. Putting them together is pretty much how I run project uh, pro projects nowadays and meetings nowadays, herding cats, I tell you. Um, so lots of things through my career have been relevant. Uh, I used to work in Whitehall. I used to work, uh, have a defence job. Some of that's useful with regard to security. I was once... Believe it or not, I'm a Microsoft certified systems engineer. Uh, I actually used to build Windows ser servers all across Europe. Uh, I can't remember the last time I used Windows now. Uh, but it's still relevant. It's still relevant. It's all the same stuff. Um, so I've got all those things. I've got some qualifications. I couldn't tell you where the certificates are now from my qualifications I got at school. I couldn't tell you how to determine if my MCSE status is still relevant. Evidence is important. So it's not just saying you've done something, it's being able to show it as well, okay? And have that issuing organisation, be that um, the O-level certificates I got at school were issued by the certification authority who did that. Um, they're important and their reputation is important to show that my certificate is real and valuable, etc. Okay? So there has to be that evidence. And at the moment, for me, all that evidence is scattered across in a fairly random way. Uh, I've got some ITIL qualifications, I've got some Agile qualifications, um, and they're not really in one place. I have some certificates in a book because I used to work in pharmaceuticals and you have to have a training manual type thing. But, oh, okay. Um, so I need to demonstrate that to people like yourselves. And some organisations do that and they make it very possible to see what you've done. So, for example, the Scouting Association and... My mum went looking. She could only find some greedy farms for my brother, unfortunately. Uh, but they're extremely cute. But as you can see, if you were to walk into the environment of a Cub Scout pack, is it a pack? Then it's very obvious. 
who's done all the um, who's the who's the qualified, who's the knowledgeable, who's the um, most able little cub scout there. Quite how my brother got a first aid badge though, I've no idea because he faints at the sight of blood. <laughs> there are some slight equivalents in Drupal as well. Um, so we have quite a popular thing about sticking badges all over laptops. Uh, this is mine currently, I think, currently. Might have stuck some more on since then. Uh, however, not all of them are completely uh, sort of real. I went out and just to make a demonstration, I've actually got a, a smack sticker on the back of this laptop today. Uh, simply, I don't know smacks, I've never claimed to. Uh, but I can use a sticker, so it's kind of false. Yeah, so unless you can trace it back, it kind of doesn't work. Okay, so you need that ability to trace back uh, with these things. Okay, uh, so someone needs to control these signs of authority. Um, now, there are some tools that allow that to happen in a digital world. Okay, one that's really coming up at the moment and being used by a lot of organisations. Uh, Mozilla Open Badges, apparently they're now recording 14,000 different organisations issuing their badges, which I was just amazed at. And that's already within really basically a few months. Um, so that's just wonderful. It's basically works in a few different ways. It's a standard for showing evidence of achievement. It's distributed, it's federated, okay? It's only a standard, it's not a centralized thing. So websites or organizations can implement the components that they want to implement, which is really useful. And actually the users of the system can then choose which bits they want to do too, which is quite nice. So you can either issue badges to demonstrate that uh, somebody has achieved something. So I can see someone from my career in the audience at the moment and they do their certifications. So they would be able to issue a badge, some evidence on there. Then you can have web websites that display a person's badges that they've earned, both maybe that they've earned on their own website, but also ones from other organizations as well. Okay. Uh, because there is the concept of a backpack and it's possible with the tool set that Mozilla Open Badges provides to, when you've been issued a badge on one website, to put it into a backpack, Mozilla operate one themselves obviously, uh, put it into a backpack to keep all of your badges together. They still hold a link back to where they originally came from so you can trace back and find out who this person who issued the badge was. So there is some level of authenticity to it, which is good. But basically, you've got one place where you can store them. And as a user, you can manage them. Uh, so website can, website can issue badges. And it can also display badges that a user has chosen. And it's very important that has chosen to display. So if I have a quick look. I was playing around earlier with some uh, badges so I can put badges into collections and make some collections public and then people can see those from there, okay? Uh, I'll come back to that later. Um, and this is about as technological as I'm going to get, really. The badges aren't complicated. This isn't something that um, requires huge amounts of computing effort to, to deal with the badges. Uh, literally a ping, I may mean, have to be a ping currently, uh, and some JSON. I mean, here's an example. This won't actually work, I suppose. But um, there's some unique information in there to help it with authenticity. There's the, there's the description field which allows us to say what this badge means, what, what this person has achieved by doing this. And then there's a criteria field which shows, um, okay, what did they have to pass? So then in the case of 
you know, Acura, that would be a, a test of some description. Uh, and you could link to the test so people could see, okay, this person must know this list of things. Okay? Okay, so I only know this because a couple of years ago I got approached by Cardiff University to up, upgrade a website that um, I'd worked on in the past as well. Um, and they've got this ace learning technologist at kind of Cardiff University, uh, Carl Luke, who did came to me and said, I've heard of this thing called Mozilla Open Badges and we'd like to implement it on the website. Uh, so we kind of did straight away because it was actually much easier than I thought it was going to be, uh, which was nice. So we built this website for pain uh, professionals, healthcare professionals that are interested in pain, have a special interest in pain. It's got lots of information on there. They can do CPD courses. When they complete, complete the CPD courses, they can be issued badges. Okay? Healthcare professionals have to do so many hours of CPD a year, and they have to have evidence of that. Um, they have to do learning reflections upon it and all sorts of things. So... Uh, a course would look kind of going down, describing the course, um, and it kind of just kind of all sorts of things on the screen, and they have to go through various places. Oh, that video's not working too well, is it? <laughs> and they would kind of do a quiz, and then they would have to do learning reflections once they've completed the quiz. Okay? So with that course we then looked at how we were going to implement the Open Badge software to do that. And the first thing we needed to do was to explain to people why they're being issued these badges. And I think that's really important. You can't just dive in and do something without explaining it, um, which seemed a fairly sensible thing to do. Um, so on a user's account, they would have their usual professional information, which... Uh, all other users could see within the website. Uh, and they would also have badges. So we would be able to see the badges um, and achievements that this user, my, my test user really here, um, has achieved. Uh, in this case, I've only got one. Oh, well. <laughs> the way it goes sometimes. Um, but basically, you have a list of badges now, what we can do is because um, we're using the Open Badges software, we can show badges that are available on our website, but also badges that this user, via their email address, have earned elsewhere. Okay? So we have a situation where if this person is a, is a surgeon they would have done things more than just on our website, but on other websites in the future as well. Um, and Cardiff University are looking to use this elsewhere too, which is really great. So in this example, I've already... Those two badges that you saw earlier that I'd put in that backpack are appearing here. Okay? So we, we're searching through the Mozilla backpack and pulling out the things for that user, okay? So I can add a badge. So I could click on the badge that I earned here, and it would, the Mozilla backpack would recognize me via my email address. It would say, do you want to accept this badge and put it into your backpack? You'd say yes, and it, in it would go, okay? And then that would add to what we were seeing earlier, okay? So pretty much that's it in terms of what you have to do as a user, okay? The website owner can then actually interrogate all that and can find out much more about the people, who, the badges and the achievements that they've earned outside of their own website, okay? So you can look and say, okay, this user's on our website has done this list of half a dozen things. On these other websites, they've also done all these things. 
Yeah, we can use that as useful information. If you think back to Dries's uh, keynote this morning, he was looking to expand the knowledge of uh, how people contribute to Drupal.org, and this is kind of a similar thing. So, to build what we did there, we used the achievements module, which is already in, on Drupal.org, uh, which does actually the vast majority of the work. Um, we imp implemented certain one-off badges. We defined either events happening in the system, so hooks within Drupal 7. So you just wait for a hook to happen, check some criteria that you want to check, issue a badge. It's actually pretty easy to do. Um, and then also what you could do is count. So within the website we have a pain management forum type situation. So what we can do is we can watch for people answering questions within the forum and when they've answered uh, 10 questions or something usefully that people like, issue them a badge. You're a person who's really useful for engaging within that community. So it's not just somebody completing CPD, it's people doing other things as well. And anything that you can work and count on the website, you can then make a hook that will actually issue an achievement. And therefore, with the AMOBB module, if I move on, um, you can export those achievements as badges that Mozilla will understand. Um, it's not completely out of the box. You have to mess about a little bit with various patches, some of which I've done, some of which other people have done, to make it actually work. Um, but it does work, and it does produce badges and achievements and the JSON that Mozilla expects to find, and it does actually do the job. And there's not a lot of coding involved. Okay. Having said that, you don't have to use that method. You don't have to use achievements. You don't have to use AMOBB, uh, which are two contrib modules. You could, I think, certainly in Drupal 8, you could do that, all that work, without installing any contrib modules. You could do it with a view. As long as you can get JSON, <coughs> out of a view, as long as you can send the things, a bit of JavaScript, actually, you could do all that with core, okay? And actually, I think if I was redoing this project now, knowing more about core as I kind of learn my way thing, I think that's actually what I would do. It would be my personal choice now. Um, views, output some JSON, have some nice pings ready, draw some nice badges. That's the hard bit. Okay. Okay, so that's a case study. But what about you and I? What about how we could use something similar? Okay. Being able to have a situation where Achievements are recognised in a way that you can display, not just on Drupal.org profile, but elsewhere. I don't know, LinkedIn, if you like. I'm actually coming off LinkedIn, but that's another matter. Um, you could display them anywhere. You could display them within your... If you've got a large Drupal dev community and you wish to display the badges, you could implement your website, your internet, as a displayer. Bang, people's badges appear from their Drupal.org profile. Yeah? Other organizations, as I mentioned earlier about the certifications at Acquia, could show their badges on the Drupal.org profile. What's that? Anybody recognize it? Yay! <laughs> I'm so glad someone did. <laughs> Drupal Association is all about getting that global open, open source community to, together and helping them build and promote Drupal. 
if we can help them do that by making them feel recognised, not just through commits, not just through uh, answering questions in IRC, not just through answering issues, not just through um, all of the other things that actually happen on the Drupal.org website, but if we could start to show recognition on the Drupal.org profile for things that have come from elsewhere, then we can really bring the community together. I'm wearing this T-shirt today from the London DrupalCon a couple of years ago because it actually it's really important to me. Uh, when I first got into Drupal, um, it was... The fact that I volunteered, and this was a volunteer's t-shirt, um, the fact that I volunteered at DrupalCon London, for me, was massive. It changed my ability to get into the community. Uh, I met, I didn't know anyone. I met people. I got to know people. It helped me get started. It was a big deal. Yeah? But there's very little way to, for people at the DrupalCon London to send recognition onto my Drupal.org profile that I did that. If DrupalCon London, as part of the community, was able to do that, we'd have a really powerful system and federate away Drupal Association having to do everything. Let other organisations be able to push things onto that Drupal.org profile. And that is what I really think would be really useful about open badges, because we can do it in a really wonderfully managed way. Now, I don't want to talk about people's Drupal, how your Drupal.org profile looks. And the main reason I don't want to do that is because Danny and a load of other people have been doing a load of things with Drupal.org profiles recently, um, particularly from how it looks. And they have a session in here next, all about it, as I understand. <laughs> and I, I'm going to stay, definitely. Okay, that's my old profile. <laughs> and I'm sure you're going to make it beautiful. Well, apart from the picture, anyway. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's, it's work, working on that and how it looks. Personally, I don't really care. But I do care where the information comes from. And I really, really want to make that a wider group of people than just the Drupal Association, because they can only do so much. And so much of your value to the Drupal organization, to the Drupal community, your value is more than what you do on Drupal.org. It's you go to camps, you go to camps and you speak. You go to camps and you volunteer. You go to camps and you... Help out, you mentor. Um, you would sit in IRC. You sit in I Drupal UK IRC. It's more than answering questions. It's about cheering people up when they're having a really rubbish day, <laughs> which seems to happen occasionally. Uh, so that is part of the community, and we need to recognise that, and we need more than just Drupal.org to achieve that. Okay. I'm going to come back to a couple of things. Do you remember I showed up my brother's cup uniform? It was trying to look for the equivalents. Yeah? Now, we could probably think of a few organisations within the Drupal community that are relevant, and you would think they are... They're the people that can say what's right and what's wrong. Yeah? Well, <laughs> Acquia Certification Programme. I really, really, really want, when you pass an Acquia Certification, I really want a badge on my Drupal.org profile. But I'll be honest, I don't just want Acquia to have the capability to do that. I don't want us to change Drupal.org specifically to allow Acquia... No offence to do that. <laughs> I want other organisations who might want to do certification. I don't know if 
uh, Lullabot, that type of thing. I think they had a go at them some t- one time, didn't they? I seem to remember doing some certificates. Um, I want a few people because I think that's good for the community to have that diversity. Um, I want Drupal camps. Drupal camps, if someone's organised a Drupal camp, they have got some people to really commit to um, speak, to volunteer, etc. That's a big deal, and we need to recognise that. And we can't expect the people at, at Drupal Association to start creating code every time somebody wants a badge just for a speaker at Drupal Camp Yorkshire. As much as Yorkshire is very important to me, um, we'd be asking a bit of Drupal.org. Open badges means it can just happen. Okay. I'm actually going slightly quicker than I thought. Okay. So what I wanted to do is actually spend a bit of time thinking about... And I do want this to be a conversation... Hence the reason I asked some questions earlier, because I'm going to get started in a minute. Um, I want to be a conversation about open badges and how we could use that and what considerations there might be to actually make it happen. From a technical point of view, I don't think there's actually a lot of work. I think largely it's all of the issues around that. So we'll have a look at that in a moment. Um, but what I wanted to do is come back to our people and see what they felt. So, JP, I'm picking on you again. You've had a bit of a think right. about your... Well, I hope you have. <laughs> so, back to your previous job. What was it, your first job? So my first job, I was like a publishing assistant. So, uh, it was print publishing. Okay. A few years ago, and my job was to uh, handle all the, a lot of kind of back office. So I get in all these requests from this kind of distributed sales team, all of uh, the Middle East and Europe, Middle East and Europe, and it would be various kind of print stuff. So it was all. You know, so what was what what made it what's still relevant about that today? Because I'll guarantee there'll be something. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think I think that was where I first started. I get all these emails in, and obviously an email was just kind of being a rambling thing about, um, you know, wanting so many hundred leaflets for such a thing and with such a printing and such a whatever. And I think it was a real eye opener to not use email as a to do list, not using your inbox as a to do list. Okay. Starting to keep kind of formal records and tracking things. Okay, so it was a project management thing kind that of, you yeah, still do today. Yeah. That's cool. And this is, you know, this is like 15 years ago. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> what was the job again? So, Sorry, thanks. So for me, I, when I was 18, I started working at a computer shop. And on my first day, I managed to sell someone a very nice notebook. And he asked me to turn it on, so I unwrapped it, wanted to turn it on, and dropped it on the floor just in front of me. <laughs> like, hour, You're going to tell me about backups in a minute, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> so I managed to say something like, "Let me check if I have another one." <laughs> went back to the store, beat red, uh, went to my manager, and kind of told him the story. And he just started laughing and said, "Yes, well, that's why we have insurance." Right? <laughs> and for me, th- this lesson that you know you can make mistakes. Brilliant. It is that's absolutely true, and that is a really good one, actually. Yeah, cool. Really good, <laughs> <laughs> it's clearly stuck with you. Yeah. I think we've lost someone, haven't we? So, okay, cool. Okay, so I really want to make this a conversation because that's what it says on the title, and um, I really want to ask some questions. Is there anything about open badges in particular? are about how it can be in the community that might get us started. 
Uh, I've got some questions, if not, but is there any questions on what I've said that might get us going? Uh, so you were talking about the Scout, uh, Scout Association yeah. earlier and mentioning Acquia afterwards, uh, but shouldn't that be like the Drupal uh, Association role? Well, like I think hosting what I want, yeah. a backpack for the Drupal community? I mean, would that be the way to go to, you know, kind of Absolutely. with? Yeah, I think what I was trying to say was, um, let me get this right. So we have a situation where someone's learning, someone's involvement in, in growing up and learning is not just their Scout Association. Yeah, Scout Association is one provider of um, recognition upon a person, okay? So who were the equivalents of the Scout Association for a person growing up is more, is, isn't just the Drupal Association, they're, they're a displayer of things and that they, they do recognize people, but also other people do as well. So I think what I'm trying to say is that the Drupal Association should definitely be issuing badges and they will have some things that they can issue badges for. So, for example, we should, in theory, be able to notice when people first start committing into Drupal 8. I mean, we had people stand up, so we, we all had to stand up during the keynote if we committed anything into Drupal 8. Oh, sorry, not personally committed, but <laughs> uh, submitted some patches that were then committed into Drupal 8. So, we stand up. Okay. We should be able to automatically do that and issue a badge the first time that you do that. Yeah? That's the Drupal Association badge to issue and one that they would also want to display. Uh, we've then got other organisations that would want to recognise people. Acquia is one, and equally, Lullabot, Four Kitchens, any of the other organisations that really want to do that. And the thing we've recognizing someone is the the bonus from that if you issue recognition to someone it improves their profile a little bit okay but it doesn't just improve their profile if that person's good it also improves the profile of the issuer because they've recognized that person okay so if you wish to get into if you wish to increase your profile of um, your courses, your certification in the Acquia or anybody else who wish to do that, then it's a good thing to be able to do that because you will find people like yourself who, who really, really know Drupal uh, very well, uh, a lot of people in here, um, then by doing that recognition and saying, yeah, this person's good, actually, it improves your own reputation as well because you're recognising that. Okay? It's a two-way thing, and it's good for both sides of that recognition. Uh, but, sorry, I didn't mean to say that Acquia was the overarching um, knowledge on this. I was trying to say it's one of them, but it's one that's already got some level of reputation. Yeah, in the same way that the Scout Association and the Guiding Association uh, also have some level of um, reputation already. Okay? Because they actually, there's a lot of really good people gone through that organisation. Yeah? They do good things. Uh, you could say the same for um, Sea Cadets. Yeah? They're probably a less well-known organisation, but they do, they do similar things in similar ways. Okay? So we would have other equivalents as Acquia. Okay? Uh, anything else? Oh, you look like you're ready to... <laughs> yeah, do you want to grab the mic? I think it's a really good idea. Yeah, otherwise we won't get this recorded. I don't know where to look, which way to look for. I'll just look at... <laughs> <laughs> Everyone is back. So can I just take this... Uh, okay, hi. Uh, I'm Prasad. Uh, I work for Akvia and uh, I, since last one year and I was the part of core team which uh, developed the certification right since its uh, inception uh, till its launching and uh, the development of program, the development of the 
technical part, the questions and, and everything I was involved uh, throughout last one year. Uh, there are two two things that we are talking about over here. The one aspect is uh, recognition of contribution and achievements. It's certainly one part and which can be done fairly uh, objectively by any organization because if I participate voluntarily uh, in a Drupal camp or a Drupal con, it's very easy to identify that Prasad has uh, attended Drupal con Amsterdam, so put a batch, achieve, issue a batch. Uh, the second thing, achievements, uh, if I build like 10 websites, 100 websites, if I build, if I work for say NASA, it's fairly objective and independent to find out who has worked for it. Uh, Akviat certification, the, the purpose is not about achievements and contribution. Uh, it's more about uh, independent and objective evaluation uh, of a person's Drupal capabilities. So capabilities are slightly different than achievements and contribution. And the, the purpose of that, the, uh, unfortunately, in spite of being in, in, uh, in, in the world for last say almost 10 years, uh, now there is Microsoft certification, there is Oracle certification, there is Java certification, uh, but there is no certification for Drupal. So there is no way in the world for an employer to evaluate whether a person I am employing knows Drupal well or not. Whether a person I am employing uh, can work on a certain job specifications that I am expecting him to work or not. And that was the purpose of launching Akviat certification. It was to provide a objective and independent way being a certifying authority uh, to, to evaluate, to judge and then to certify whether this person knows certain skills which are yeah. specified in our exam document. Yeah. That was the purpose. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. So what I wanted to do possibly was have a quick... Um... So just one last minute. And another thing, uh, if you see uh, while launching... Uh, the certification, Driss has written a blog post and he had mentioned over there basically uh, that Acquia just wants to be just one of the certifying authorities and he would love and Acquia would love to see more and more certifying authorities as well as certifications come in the, uh, in the ecosystem. Yeah. Well, what I wanted to do very much was see, see that certification as one, one of a group. Absolutely. And I think that uh, it, it makes it easier for uh, people to see those and to make them visible. Um, so what other things should we be making visible? What other things outside of contributing patches, contributing documentation, what should we actually be recognising? Is there anything in particular? I think the first one is uh, association membership. Yes, absolutely. Recognising the association membership would be a really useful thing. <laughs> It's a custom thing. It's actually something that, yes, we do currently. Although, interestingly, mine is broken at the moment. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes, I have paid. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, we absolutely should recognise that. And, in fact, at the moment, we've already built into Drupal.org custom way of doing that. And what I would like to do is make that more standard so that we can do it with other things. That's absolutely what this is about. Okay? Um, is there anything else with regard to what, what is it that you have done that you think is important to the Drupal community that we don't currently show on your profile and we can't trace back? So what things do you do? Absolutely. So who is the authority that gets to say that you've done that work? These are camps that you organize which are... Yes. Yeah. yeah. Currently we can't do it. Yeah. So currently we have camps that are the authority for saying that you've put in effort <coughs> to make the Drupal community as brilliant as it is. And we need to make it possible for that authority... To, public, to, to issue badges or to issue that achievement and recognise it in a way that not just the camp can see it but everybody in the Drupal community can see it because that way you impart that uh, niceness on that person but it also gives the camp saying wow all these people went to the camp all these people volunteered all these people spoke at the camp in where? Bunny. Oh, okay, Bunny. Okay, cool. 
Um, so we went to that camp, and it sounds like it was a really good camp. So we can show that, and we can show not just that the people who went, but the fact that the camp was good and vibrant. Yeah? Is there anything else with regard to Drupal? What you've been, what have you, so everybody here has done something in Drupal. I can guarantee it. You've all done something that is valuable. You will have. You've just got to kind of say what it is. Yeah, use local user group meetups. Yeah, so people going along to organizing meetup groups and so on. Us being able to recognize the work of those. So that might be that the authority for that, the person who wishes to issue achievements on that, might either be the meetup themselves, or it might be, well, in the case, actually, would it be still Drupal UK? I'm not so sure now. I'm thinking more like if it's like Drupal Bristol or Drupal. Yeah. Okay, Drupal Bristol, just, yeah, okay, that's cool. Okay, so anybody at the back, what have you committed or what do you think you've done that makes it all so valuable that you've done that really keeps Drupal going? No? The contributions on forums, so the, the thing that you mentioned with yeah. the um, paid communities. Yeah. Like... Oh, you can do that. There are some things that we should be doing automatically, yeah within Drupal.org that we could recognize. When you go on like a LinkedIn group, it says things like, you know, you're an ace contributor or whatever, and yeah. it says how much you contributed. There's obviously really basic criteria that it's doing that on, so that kind of thing. Yeah. Like you're a gold star contributor in a... Okay. For good. Okay, so there's lots of different things. So what I'd really like to do, and does this... What I'd really like to do is spend a few moments thinking about how that happens on other sites as well. Oh, she's just Danny's creator. Well, you know. All right. So one thing I'll say is I don't think that being a loud mouth generally counts, but that's <laughs> my role. Um, one of the things that one of the things that this makes me think of is a conversation actually that Josh and I had in Austin, which is this is a great idea, but where should it live? Should it live on Drupal.org, or should it be... Like, this wasn't specific to open badges, but it was specific to something else. I think having a badge structure where we're saying, you know, the community independently gives you this, you know, says that you have this ability. I think that's a great idea. I wonder if it should live specifically on Drupal.org or if it should be its own thing that Drupal.org can then pull in. I think, I think it's a good question and it's something that I think we need to um, get right. I think that how I've spent time thinking, uh, thinking along those lines was that Open Badges by itself is federated. Users mm -hmm. get to choose what they show. Yeah. And that's a really great thing. So when I made some badges earlier, I got to... It's always a really far away, isn't it? I got to choose which badges I made public. Mm -hmm. And what we, what we could do is we could say... Drupal.org has its core facility, facility for showing achievement. That's, that's core to Drupal.org. Things that happen on Drupal.org should be seen as highest priority within people's Drupal.org profile. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't see any issue with saying this person has wider experience than just things that they do on Drupal.org. And I think lower down in the profile, there is certainly space. Uh, having seen your designs for later, uh, unless they've changed. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's certainly space for saying, okay, this person has done all these things, but they have also got these other experiences that have come from the wider Drupal, .org, Drupal, Drupal community, and even wider than that, because I've got experiences and um, capabilities that are not just Drupal, mm -hmm. yeah? But I think it is all relevant because I don't hire someone and I don't expect to be hired on the 
knowledge of or, or, or my profile within Drupal.org that mm -hmm. Drupal.org maintains because it only tells you about what you do within Drupal.org. So, but my, me as a person is more than that. Mm -hmm. Not a lot, I'll admit. But <laughs> <laughs> uh, so there's more to it. Yeah. And I think it's an opportunity for us not to do very much. And we have to put some caveats. And I'd like to, I've organised a boff session for um, the... For tomorrow. Um, where we can talk about that type of thing. So what is it that Drupal.org maintains, which is pretty much basically everything it does now. It's, yeah. This is only additional. This is, this is fleshing out and making it a person more colourful in the fact that they can do all of these other things. Yeah? And I'd really like to spend some more time on that. We could do either or both, and that's a discussion to be had. Yeah. Anything you want to put in there? Well, we don't need to trust them because Drupal.org isn't doing something. Drupal.org isn't saying anything other than saying, look, this person has these badges. This is the context of Mozilla.org. These are the, these are the context <laughs> and place those badges within context of they are earned and managed via Mozilla Backpack and explain what that means. Yeah, exactly. Hi. Hi. So I had some ideas um, thinking about, you know, as you were talking, thinking about what, what benefits I would get out of open badges, you know, external to uh, Drupal, uh, for instance. You know, as we're working on Symphony projects, those are now very related to Drupal itself, but they're not a part of the Drupal project. Yeah. So they, it might be good to say, hey, this person is not only Drupal, but, you know, PHP expert, Symphony expert. Exactly. Or not even just expert, because the expert's the wrong word. It's a contributor. You know, they, they are somewhat knowledgeable. Um, I mean, any kind of knowledge, and even things as related to, to uh, you know, in the DevOps community, Vagrant yeah. or, or PuffPet, uh, which is a Microsoft PHP. engineer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, JavaScript libraries, front-end things. I mean, you know, Grunt. You know, if you made a Grunt plugin yeah. that does some amazing things. And, and so uh, GitHub integration um, and, uh, or uh, Node Package Manager integration there. Definitely, you need to come tomorrow. Look for that. So seriously, I'll just put you up there and let you just kind of talk, and we'll just write it down. <laughs> but it's literally a case of yeah, we are more than what we do in terms of patches. We're definitely more than that. Um, I, I would love to learn some grunt stuff because I don't know it, and I know it's going to be relevant. So, what are the issues to get that implemented? Like. What are the big questions we need to ask and decide on to make that a uh, reality? Okay, so I think the first thing we need to do is we need to understand that there is a buy-in from people that we want to have Drupal.org show someone as a wider person or as a wider organization as well. I think we agree on that. Yeah, I think we do. <laughs> <laughs> but we need, we need a wider group of people to agree on that. I think that we need to understand how we can explain the context of that wider recognition. Because it's more... Because, because the recognition is then being done in a federated way. It's being done by organisations other than the Drupal Association. We need people to understand what that means. But, I mean, to, uh, as a first step, I don't think that's a big problem because open badge, you, I mean, you choose which one you want to show. Yeah. So if you don't do anything, nothing will show up. So it's not like no, we impose, impose something on people so we can just yeah. implement that and explain afterwards. Yeah. So to me, that's not like a blocker. It's certainly important to get a lot of people using it, but not necessarily to get that through the issue queue and into Drupal.org. 
to, I, I think in terms of getting the technology up there, right. I think that we just need to get on with it. Yeah, We need to have the commitment to do it from a willing group of people, of which I'm prepared to put some effort in, because I care about this stuff. I'm prepared to put you know, a good few hours into this. Uh, I, I'm, I'm prepared to take a day a week for a period of time to actually help make it happen. Because um, I have that cap capability at the moment. I want to make this happen. I want to work with people who are more knowledgeable of how to represent it on the screen to make it happen. And then what we can do is we can see how it runs. Because as, someone, as you said earlier on, it's okay to make mistakes. The great thing about implementing an API like this is it doesn't stop you doing something else. You could implement something else that comes along later as well. Suppose Open Badgers isn't the thing that becomes the de facto standard in recognizing achievements in five years. Well, kind of so what? You leave the Open Badgers there and you implement the other thing as well. There's nothing to stop you doing that. Um, so largely, we kind of just need to get on with it and we need people who are excited by the idea and want to learn how to do it so they can then use it elsewhere as well. Bearing in mind there's these 14,000 other organisations, a lot of learning organisations that are already doing it. Um, and if you go to the openbadges.org website, it's just really buzzing, really vibrant. They've really got something going now. Um, and I think that us getting there on the upward curve of something like that, I think is a big deal. And I think it, if we do it, it says a lot about Drupal. Yeah, to other organisations, if we can do something like that and push it. I think it's an opportunity for us. Yeah, but I'm talking about it next week, uh, tomorrow, and we'll sit down with a big whiteboard. What a it's I've forgotten. <laughs> I did, I, it's on that link, and my blooming internet's not working. Yes, I think it is. Cool. It's in the afternoon, I know that. I would never book something in the morning. Not when there's afternoon <laughs> slots. Thank you very much, everyone. With this session, obviously I'm kind of asking you so many, at least as many questions as I'm talking about. Session feedback is massively important to me to know how to change this and to make it really ring with the rest of the community. So if you don't like it, please say so-so. No, if you do, please say so. It matters so much. Just go to, the, go to the schedule. There should be a link there on my session. Please, I don't care what you say, but do say something. Yeah? I won't be hurt too much. Thank you.